In this video, I'm going to show you how you can use the maze generator to make your own custom shape mazes. Now, the first thing you want to do is select masked grid and a type of maze, and then choose your algorithm. Now, if you're not sure um, what algorithm to choose, uh, please do watch my little video on it and do your own research because they are quite complicated to explain. But for this example, and for most people, it won't matter too much which one you choose. So we've chosen our masked grid up here. We can ignore the rows and the columns. And then if we want a unique solution, we're going to keep that on zero. And then we're going to go to our mask config here. So we have two options. We can import uh, a single image file or we can import a whole folder full of images. Now if you import a folder obviously it will loop through all of the images in the folder and if you import a single file of course it does a single file and then you can control the amount of loops it does down here. So if you have a single file and you put 50 it will do 50 versions of that um, image, obviously all different um, uh, mazes and solutions to that image, but just that image. And if you put 50 for a folder, it will loop through that folder 50 times. So once you've chosen your image or your folder, you just uh, do that by clicking the little folder here and then um, selecting, so I'm gonna choose Fox here, click OK. Our next option here is our ratio mask. Now this affects the the amount of the image it grabs and turns into a maze. Now for most examples and typically it would generally always be 50 but if you need to play around and grab um, slightly more of the image if it's missing it or you want to remove some of the image, obviously increase or decrease this. Um, but for now, 50% is absolutely fine. Our next option here is our color mask. Now, typically, um, we don't need to use this. This is a bit more advanced. If you click auto color here, and then you click exclude color, that will generate a maze excluding the outside and just the focal point in the image so without a picture of a fox it will exclude the background and it will create a maze in the shape of the fox inside if we include the color then what it will do is create the maze outside of the fox so all around the fox so for most purposes, you want exclude color and auto color. If you're having uh, some difficulty with your image, uh, you can go in here and click the three dots. And then what you can do, you can use the color pick here and choose a color to include or exclude. Or what you can also do is you can monochrome the image like so and then obviously it's just very simple to turn into a maze then and you can also save this image here if you want by clicking save as I'll click ok go back to our auto color now our option here is to um, is our mask divider now the higher the number here the easier the maze will be so if you imagine uh, that the image uh, turns out to be a thousand, say just a thousand, and we divide that by 10, then we're going to have 100 rows, which is going to be more complicated. If we choose a higher number, for example, 100, then it's only 10 rows, so it's less complicated. So that's why the higher the number, the higher the mass divider, the simpler the maze will be. Now, once we've selected that, 
what we then want to do is choose our enter and exit cell. Now you can choose from uh, pre-configured ones. Or what you can do is if you tick manual input, you can select the cells here. For example, so you click enter and we can enter at the top of the towel and we can click exit and then exit at underneath foot like so. Click OK. And then the next option I want to show you is the uh, cell size and the pen width. So what this does is the cell size, if you view your maze as a table, in the same way that you, you create a table in say, for example, Word, the cell size is literally that, it's the, the height and the width of a cell. So the larger the number um, this is, the larger your maze will be in uh, pixels resolution. Now, of course, if you're creating uh, vector graphics, so over here, if you're choosing SVG or PDF, uh, that doesn't matter because, of course, it will scale um, automatically without any loss of quality. Uh, our next option here is our pen width. So this is the drawing of the walls and the solution path. So if I just click generate now on this one, then I can show you what it is like there. So if we go in here and go into our solution, and then we have our fox, as you can see, starting at the top and of the towel and exiting uh, through the foot. So then now if I change, if I go back into this and I, um, I increase the pen width, let's go three times, uh, let's get 60. And as you can see already, uh, the, the walls and the path are a lot thicker all the way through. And then we go back into here. Now the next option I want to show you on here is, um, of course, I briefly mentioned uh, the format you can save as here. So you've got uh, PNG, uh, BMP, JPEG, SVG, and PDF, which of course those two are vector. Um, our next option here is to choose how we want to display um, our solution. We can have no solution. We can display it in a line, which is the sort of the default that I recommend um, you use. And that's what I use um, in the example. You can choose a dot. You can choose a solid fill. Or you can do a fill distance color. What that is, is basically it starts off um, light shade and as it gets further through, it turns into a darker shade. Now the colors for the maze, so the, the, the walls here, black, you can click and, and, and change. The background, if you want a background color, if you want transparent, just tick the little transparent box over here. And of course the distance or solution path uh, is red, uh, but again, for example, if you're creating for KDP, uh, you might want to choose a grey or something similar like that. And then, once you've chose that, uh, the next options I want to show you is you get to choose here where you want to output your mazes and solutions. Now, by default, this will go into uh, the folder you extracted the maze generator into. So, um, for example, puzzles, I'd go into that folder slash puzzles and then solutions, that folder um, slash solutions. Our next option I want to show you quickly is the um, option to do the longest path. Now, if you tick this, it will attempt to find the longest possible path through the maze. And as simple as that. And our next option here is to print our legend copyright. So what this is, this is basically the copyright notice underneath. You can customize it by typing in here, or you can untick it and not include it. And for this, uh, you can choose the font name here, the font you want to use for it here. Uh, type this in exactly as it appears on your computer. 
and then here we have the row size so the larger the row size the larger the font size basically so at the moment you can see um, let's bring it up a little bit bigger this is at uh, 150 um, what we can do of course we can make it larger do it like that A little bit too big there, it's coming off the thing. Let's go down to 200. And here we can of course align it, so you can do it in the center, left or right. Let's generate that again. There we go, much better. In the center like that, perfect. Then we go back into here. And then next option I want to show you is the um, the ability to draw arrows so as you saw in my examples I have this ticked if you don't want arrows just untick it and then if you've ticked it click the uh, three little dots here and then you can completely customize your arrow so you can make it thinner larger longer whatever you like and then once you're happy with all your customizations, of course you can change the fill and the outline. Uh, save it. I know there's an offset here, but I just want to um, show you this first and we'll come back to offset. So we click save, and then if we click generate, and then if we go into it here, you know, that looks okay, but we might, for example, um, want to go back in and then we might want to move the arrow. So if I offset it all the way this way, and go in here, you see we've now got a larger gap between the end of the arrow and the start of the arrow and our maze. Now, depending on, um, of course, your settings, you may want you may want to move this closer, move it further away. The best thing to do is just have a play and find what suits your mazes best. So if we go back into it, and then now what I wanna show you is um, the ability to make our mazes here into numeric mazes. So what are numeric mazes? Rather than the typical, um, the walls around here, it's numbers. It's basically a complete, uh, grid filled with numbers and the numbers you have to follow the numbers to get all the way from for example zero at the start of the maze to 100 and similar to mazes as well you have uh, dead ends as well so what I'm going to do I'm pretty sure that if I make the uh, if I make the walls a lot thinner and then if I tick numeric up here and then what I'm going to do if I generate that and then we'll show you here and this up now. And as you can see here, you follow it down and not one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, but similar to mazes as well, normal mazes. There are paths you can go down, not one, two, three, four, five, which are dead ends. See, we do not have a six connected here, so we have to go back and go back down that path, like so. So if I close that. Where we go back in again, take um, numerica off, and then the uh, last, well, last major feature I want to show you is uh, the weight setting. So you can import your own images or obstacles here by clicking the folder, I set in the folder, and then you give them a weighting here. So each step normally is one, so one, two, three, four, five, as it works its way uh, through the maze. Now what you can do is then drag and drop these on. And here is the waiting. So for example, the back here is 10. So if the path needs to go through here, you have um, one, two, and then there would be 10 onto that, so it'll be 12, 13, 14. So when you generate the maze, it will look to generate a maze with the lowest possible cost.
to get through the maze, like so. And then if you want to print that, you print here, and then that prints the values underneath your maze as well. So the final thing I want to just really quickly show you is the um, how quickly it can generate mazes for you. So I'll take the copyright notice off. And so we've got our fox here. Let's create 50 foxes. And let's stay with the same um, settings. Yeah, cool, click generate. And there we go. We have our 50 different uh, foxes bases, just like that. And then if we were gonna input a folder, and let's choose, uh, let's choose this folder here. Select folder. And let's do that. I don't know, let's do that 10 times. Generate that. And there you go, as you can see, by doing it 10 times, we then have 10 versions of each maze, of each image like so. I hope this quick video um, slash introduction to uh, making custom shaped mazes helps. Thank you for watching.